I don't ever have to do anything with it. That's how I, you know if it's a good controller. You mount it one time, you forget it exists. That's the whole goal with solar controllers, and that's what this will give you. Hi right, everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're gonna to talk about solar power. I haven't shot a video on solar power in quite a while. Uh, I'm in the process of installing a external system. And by external system, I mean I have one of these folding panels that I'm going to take outside and then power and charge a battery in the side. I did a review on this once that this is what it will look out with all laid out. And I have two of these. One's a different brand. You can't just connect those directly by a wire to your battery that will kill your battery. Even a lithium battery with its own built-in uh, BMS, battery management system. That still, it still needs an MPPT controller to give it the optimum amount of power. And today I'm gonna to tell you how to go about choosing a charge controller and I'll tell you all about why I chose this one by EP Ever. Every solar controller I ever need will be an EP Ever, uh, probably this basic line, the tracer line. Now, some of you are thinking, yeah, but I sure think you should have bought a, a Victron. And see, Victron is the opposite. It's about the most expensive controller that you can buy. It's hard to pay more than buying a Victron, but they're very, very high quality and they're very feature rich. And so you're not gonna get more performance. What you're buying is longevity. And I question the longevity of Victron. And a lot of you are going to write in and say, no, they run forever. And maybe they do. I don't know. I can only tell you mine didn't. And it doesn't make sense to me to get to use these little teeny tiny boxes. And they get hot. Man, mine got hot. You couldn't hardly keep your hands on it. It was so hot. I've got the same size now, EP Ever, in there. And it never gets hot. Heats the death of electronics. Okay, so let's unbox this, see what we've got. This cost me $150, it's 40 amps. It can handle, according to them, up to 500 watts of, uh, of solar, 540 watts of solar. I'm putting 400 watts on. First, it comes with the, the solar charge controller itself. This one, this is a kit. They come stripped down with nothing or uh, put together as a kit. I mean, you can just buy the solar controller if you don't want to rest this stuff. But it comes with an external monitor and the cabling to attach this to the controller, solar charge controller. And I think this is really important. One of the bad things about the Victron is you have no knowledge. You look at the screen, you get nothing, no knowledge. A couple of blinking lights. Uh, but the uh, cool, really cool app is really, really cool. And it, you can get incredible amounts of information off that app. The app is fantastic. But this is gonna be a controller. It's got a long, it's probably five, 10 foot, I don't remember. But I can run, uh, the controller will be in the battery, in the solar closet. This will run into the house, no problem. And so now I've got a display and, and control over the controller right in the house with me while the controller is outside in the closet with the batteries. This works with all, this is the MT50, and it works with all of the EP Ever controllers. If you buy, in fact, when I bought my uh, 80 amper that I've got in there right now, uh, it came, I bought the kit on that and, and bought the uh, MT50. Uh, and then it comes with a um, temperature sensor. You, whatever you buy, make sure you get a temperature sens sensor. It's really important that your solar controller knows the temperature of the battery. It will adjust the input based on the temperature of the battery. One of the things you want to look for is a uh, heat sink, because again, heat's the enemy of all electronics. I think that's a nice big metal heat sink with a lot of surface. See, the, the Victron, 30-amp uh, Victron, is about this size, about a third, probably less than half, probably a third of the whole surface. So you just have a huge heat sink. You're gonna get the heat out of here. And that's what kills your controller. So, uh, and it's got a um, display and it's got nice uh, cables. One of the problems with all controllers that you wanna look at real closely is can you get a big enough cable in here? I'm gonna probably want an eight gauge cable for uh, 40 amps. And so can you fit an eight gauge cable in there and will it bite hard or will it pull out? There's the remote meter. I have one in my rig now. 
and of course it has uh, an owner's manual that comes with it as well. Then the meter itself comes with a little box you can mount right on the wall. I'll put it right in my living room so I have it. Uh, and this is pretty important if you have lithium. Uh, this is this will handle lithium, and you can go in and user select the uh, numbers that you want for your lithium battery. So the key thing is, uh, th my lithium batteries and almost all lithium batteries like a lot of voltage. They like a bulk charge at a high voltage. And in, in nearly all lithiums, that means 14.4, 14.5, 14.6. If you can get charging in that range, your lithium is going to be a very happy battery. It'll charge really fast. It'll last a long time. And then on float, you're going to want to drop, to drop down to between 13.2, 4, 13.5 in that range. Now you're going to drop down a little more than one volt. With this, you can just use the buttons and set the, uh, the panel and set all those numbers right inside here. You can set every single one of them individually or it'll come with uh, you know what's common. And for the most part, I think what's common will work for nearly all of the lithium batteries. But if you can go in and change any single parameter or every parameter, you're in control. And that's one of the things that I'm looking for uh, is that control. That's how I'm going to get the maximum life out of my batteries. So uh, all batteries, the manufacturer should have on his, on his website a page telling you exactly how to program this so your battery is treated exactly the way the manufacturer intends. That's going to get you your maximum life. And then this connects with a uh, RS, well, I don't remember what the number is, it's a standard Ethernet cable, but it comes with a cable. It'll plug right into both into the controller and then into this, and you're good to go. The kit was $150 for a 40 amp controller. That's really a good price. I've got the EP Ever uh, 80 amp in my rig now. Super happy with it. I don't ever have to do anything with it. That's how I, you know if it's a good controller. You mount it one time, you forget it exists. That's the whole goal with solar controllers, and that's what this will give you. You, you don't cry when you buy it. You don't ever cry again because it just sits in there and works. And it works as efficiently as any controller can or will. Uh, should you buy MPPT? Yes. Uh, the difference in cost is worth it. Buy MPPT in the long run uh, over the year or two or more. You'll get a lot more power into your batteries. They'll be charged better. They'll be charged the way they want to be treated. And uh, you'll get, uh, the, it's just well worth it. It's false economy to buy a PWM. And I want to run this in series. And most PWMs can't handle that voltage. This will probably be about 40 volts coming into the controller. On my, on my ambulance, it goes in at 90 volts. And so you want a controller that can handle some big voltages. The higher the voltage, the better. You use a lesser cable. You have less voltage drop off through the line. Uh, you can use the smaller cable. It's easier to connect, easier to get a good connection through these. A PWM won't do that. Well, let's just put them in together in series. So buy an MPPT. Okay, I hope that's everything you need to know to start your selection process. Okay, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button, smash that baby, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.